Good to be alive. Good to be alive. Welcome to New York City, everybody. <laughs> Emerald Lagasse here. Welcome to Emerald Live. You know, we've done a few shows over the years on eggs. So I said to myself, Self, how are we going to kick up eggs a few notches? Just wait and see. One of my favorite breakfast, Sunday, Saturday, any kind of day, egg dish, huevos rancheros. I'm going to uh, show you how to make that. Or you can kind of make them Creole eggs if you want. I'm going to, uh, because of that www dot, help me out, Emerald, please. <laughs> We're going to take a classic hollandaise sauce, and I'm going to show you a great dish. We're going to flavor the hollandaise sauce with orange and chipotles, which are a smoked pepper, served with uh, some panko fried shrimp. Oh, yeah, babe. Oh, yeah. Oh, and did I tell you, Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band in the house. in the Emerald Live Band in the house. <laughs> and then this amazing dish to really kind of show you about eggs. Not only egg is the main ingredient in this wonderful sponge cake that I'm going to show you how to make, but then we're going to make this nutty ice cream with caramel and toffee and... Oh, yeah, babe. It's, it's a, exceptional, you know what I'm saying? You know where, right here on Emerald Live! You guys thought these were the cheap seats, huh? How you doing, fellas? Well, eggs come in various sizes, from small to jumbo. That's a pretty size difference there. And uh, most recipes that call for eggs when you're cooking actually use lodge eggs. That's the standard lodge egg. And then there are so many things I think that we forget about that we do and rely on eggs with. I mean, of course, there's egg salad, deviled eggs, hollandaise sauce, mayonnaise, wouldn't have a souffle. There are different principles that eggs do, which is why they're so important in cooking. They can clarify, they can emulsify, which is like mayonnaise. So many wonderful principles. So the first dish I'm gonna show you is one of my favorite breakfast dishes here that's very simple. It kind of reminds me of like making a Creole sauce, a basic Creole sauce that we would do shrimp Creole in New Orleans. But um, this has got a little bit more heat to it because we're going to use a little bit of jalapeno pepper and also some good spices. But watch how simple this is. A little oil in a very small to medium sauce pot. We're going to add just onion and bell pepper. I have green and red today. It's one of those special days. <laughs> now, once this cooks for a little bit, what we're going to do, and, that, and cook a little bit, meaning about three or five minutes, three to five minutes, you want to start getting the flavor going with the onions and the bell peppers. Then we're going to season it. And I'm going to season it a little spicy with a little cayenne pepper or a little more cayenne pepper and a little bit of salt. Oh, yeah, man. So happy right now. Now, three to five minutes, once that cooks with the salt, cayenne pepper, the next flavoring is the jalapeno. I've used one that I've seeded and some cumin. 
cumin, little ground cumin. Now, you're gonna start really, those of you in the studio, gonna really start smelling what that cumin does. At home, you should call your local uh, cable company and complain that you don't have smell -o vision <laughs> That's what I would do. See, Doc and I, we have the full smell -o vision we sets. It. We got it. We got them, you know. <laughs> All right. I'm going to add just a tiny bit of garlic <laughs> and a couple of three tomatoes. And then what we're going to do is we're going to let this simmer. And when we come back, another knot! Stick around! Knock it! here. Exceptional kind of egg cooking tonight. All right, look, that sauce for the huevos ranchero, right? Kind of like a Creole sauce. I added about three quarters of a cup of chicken broth. And what we're doing now is we're just letting that evaporate, letting the flavors concentrate, keeping it kind of light. That's one component there. Obviously, the eggs are the next component. As well as I've, what I did here is I got some refried beans and sort of just slowly heating them up, kind of mashing them. And what a lot of people at home, when they uh, work with refried beans, they get turned off on how thick they can kind of get once they sit there. Well, it's easy to just add a little bit of water like this to them. Either adjust the seasoning, if you will. See, I, I'm just going to work that water in there. It'll take it in there because of the starch of the bean. And for this particular dish that I'm going to end up showing you now, I don't want it to be too, too thick. Now comes the little trick here. I want to start with frying some eggs. I want to do that in about medium heat, a little oil. Now, if you're a little afraid of cracking eggs, you can crack them first inside of a little cup before you add them to your fry pan so that they don't break. That's what I do is I just get a little ramekin or a little uh, cup, coffee cup, and I just crack them in there and then I just put them inside. What we're going to do is we're going to kind of steam these. Four looks pretty good to me for my portion. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's on a diet right now. <laughs> so what I want to do is I just want to, on medium heat, I want to season a little bit the eggs, because I don't know where you buy yours. Right by my eggs, they don't come seasoned. <laughs> and then I'm going to show you what we're going to do now. And that is, is by, we put a little lid on them, you see? And we're going to kind of fry them, but we're also going to steam them a little bit. I'm going to show you a little trick with that. Now, in this skillet here, what we're going to do is we're going to take just regular tortillas out of the pack. And if you have them uncovered, they're going to get very, very hard. They start doing this curly thing. So you want to keep them wrapped in plastic or in the package until you're ready to start using them, folks. And what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of butter in another non-stick and I'm gonna just sort of on like medium low heat I'm just gonna start warming up now oh, let's do another one kind of hungry today just gonna kind of warm them up a little bit all right now here's what we're gonna do you can hear the egg you can smell the egg that's a really a good sign when you can smell it and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower the heat down and I'm going to take some cheddar cheese. 
or some queso cheese, okay? Whatever you uh, kind of like, cheddar, you could use jalapeno, kick it up a few notches. Oh, yeah, babe. And then I'm just going to steam this back. And then I'm going to show you how I'm going to serve this. You see, we're just kind of warming the tortilla, just giving it that nice little color. All right. So what I like to do, why don't we do like a whole, we'll do a family portion of this. Sounds good to me. Yeah, why not? Now, how I want to finish the sauce is really quite simple. I want to take some cilantro as much cilantro as you like, okay? If you like more, add more. You want to chop it, you can chop it. You're not going to hurt my feelings. I'm kind of looking for that. You see how nice and rustic that's looking here? All right. Now what we're going to do is this. We're going to taste the sauce and see just how much adjustment we need. Do we need more salt, more pepper? Wow. More cilantro. A little bit more cilantro. All right. Now, if you're making an individual one, fantastic. You would just obviously just put one tortilla. But since we're going to do this family sort of thing here, is what I like to do. We'll just take the tortilla. Then, I like to take those refried beans. You guys are with me so far, right? You know, it's a simple dish, but if you do it right, it's incredible. Then, then what I do here is I just kind of go in now for the, for the eggs. <laughs> See, the cheese got to get them sticking a little bit, so we'll just go nice and gingerly like that with the eggs. Then if you like a refried bean kind of nut, hey, look, just add a little more. It ain't going to hurt my feelings. And then I just go right here for the old huevos ranchero sauce right here. Are you with me? Can you feel the love right now? Then for me, to finish it, just a little bit more cheese. Yeah, I'm a cheesy kind of guy. What are you going to say, you know? A little bit of cilantro like that. And just for the heck of it, you can bam like that. And there you have it. Huevos Ranchero. Oh. Just warming up, Mom. All right, I'm gonna take a little bit of shallot in a saucepan, or you could use onion. And what I did is I've got the juice of a couple of blood oranges. Or you could use regular orange as well. Well, what does that mean, someone asked in the back there, blood orange? Does that mean that it got into a fight or something? <laughs> Look, see the color of that? So you just squeeze the juice of these blood oranges, nice flavor, and we're going to add that inside of the shallot. We're going to add, can you smell that? A little white wine. Because what we're going to do is we're going to evaporate this. And then the great thing is, these are chipotle peppers, which are a smoked jalapeno pepper. See? Wonderful. They get nice smoky flavor. So what we're going to do is chop some of these chipotles, and when we come back, I'm going to show you the classic hollandaise kicked up a few notches. Don't even think about touching that dial. We'll be right back. Rock it!
Gibbs and the MLI Band. We have the uh, Huevos Ranchero out there right now, and then I want to uh, show you not only the classic hollandaise sauce, which is one of the true five mother sauces. This is what you can use for your asparagus. Or if you take the mother sauce and do what I'm going to do to it, which is with this blood orange reduction, then you change it to a compound sauce. And that classical preparation, by the way, with regular oranges is called Maltese. And I'm going to show you how to make that hollandaise sauce before I show you this simple, simple shrimp dish. Four egg yolks in a very clean is important. Stainless bowl. And I've made my own sort of water bath here, uh, which you want to be sure not to cook the eggs. You don't want to scramble the eggs. The idea is here is to cook them to get the volume of that. Now, one of the things that you can do is you can add a little bit of lemon juice. You can add orange juice, obviously, with this. You can add just a little bit of water, which will cut some of the egg yolks, because we're just using the egg yolks. And we're going to cook this over this sort of double boiler. And I'm going to show you just kind of how it's going to change color. But you want to be sure, you see, the water bath is not like rapid boiling, because that will instantly cook it. So you want to be sure that you just have just the right amount of steam to cook it evenly and properly when you're making this hollandaise sauce. Meanwhile, I reduced the white wine with the shallots and the blood orange. We've got all that evaporation going on. We have all that concentration of flavor, which is going to be what's going to flavor this simple hollandaise sauce. Now, with this in mind, you can see it's starting to get thick. We've got a ways to go. It's still pretty thin. One of the, that in mind, with a hollandaise, we're making a salad dressing right now with an egg. Well, let's just say some mayonnaise. We'd have an egg, and then we have vegetable oil or olive oil, and that would be an emulsion. Well, it's kind of the same principle, even though that we're doing it hot here with the hollandaise, because we're going to use clarified butter. That's melted butter, as you can see here, that all of the whey, the water in the butter, has been eliminated. So it's just the pure butter in here, which is going to make this and emulsify this. Now, you can see that I'm slowly, occasionally taking off, sort of when it starts to feel like it's getting a little hot or it's kind of looks like it's getting sticky to the side or the bottom, that's when you want to take it off, let some of the heat get away. Then we'll put it back on. You see, see how I'm doing it here? This is the hottest part right here of making it. Now, when you get to the point of where it's starting to get pale, it's starting to get some consistency, then we're going to make this and emulsify this with the clarified butter. Keep something in mind, folks, when you're doing this. A lot of people wonder why their hollandaise breaks when they begin to start adding the butter. You can't add it too fast. That's first thing. And the second thing is, is that you've got to be careful that your butter, your clarified butter, is not as hot as what you're trying to do here because if you're adding hot, hot butter into this, it's just going to continue to cook this. So then what happens is it breaks. All right. Now, we're just about there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to begin by putting in some of our clarified butter slowly. Hmm. See, it's good. There's a lot of ways to use the stomach, you see? Oh, I use mine to the max. I'm getting my money's worth. Okay, so we'll slowly start adding the clarified butter in here now. And then we're going to let this sort of cool. Okay, now, we're going to come back and season this. We're going to keep this just in a, in a warm sort of space right here right now. And what we're going to do, obviously, is season it with salt and pepper. But what we're going to do is we're going to add that reduction that we made of the blood orange and the shallot 
and a little bit of the white wine. We're going to make sure that this is properly cool because, again, if this is hot and we add it in here, that's going to break the sauce too. So you want to be sure that that's room temperature. A couple of minutes will do that. While we're waiting, I've got regular flour and I've got some eggs here that I'm going to add a little milk to make an egg wash and just sort of beat them up. And then I have a very interesting breadcrumb that's called panko, P-A-N-K-O, that you can get in some specialty stores. What they are is they, they're a Japanese breadcrumb. Doesn't mean that the bread came from Japan. It's just the style. You see how coarse that is? They call them panko. It's got this wonderful texture that it gives certain foods. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take some shrimp, and we're going to peel. Look at these bad boys, huh? We're going to peel these. See, you just take the legs, remove them like that, and then just remove the shell. And we're going to leave one shell on this particular preparation because, see, one shell, because we are going to fry them. Now, what I tell people when they do that, save these shrimp shells. They're like gold. What I do is I just take a zip bag and stick them in a zip bag, and then I put them in the freezer. And then after I do it a couple of three times and I get enough shells, I make a very, very simple, flavorful shrimp stock that you can use for all kinds of things. And basically, that is some salt and pepper and a couple of bay leaves. Pour water over it, and you have shrimp stock in 20, 30 minutes for a wonderful, wonderful flavor. Now. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, take some essence and season the flour, a little bit in the egg wash, and certainly the panko breadcrumbs, because they don't come seasoned. Then what we're going to do is this. We're going to take the shrimp, dredge it in the flour. Then inside the egg wash, and then right inside of these crumbs. See that? That's a happy shrimp right there. <laughs> Let me show you one more. Now, you can butterfly them. What does that mean? When you hear the term, did you uh, butterfly your shrimp? This is what butterfly means, folks. We took that whole shrimp. We went in the back over here and split it and opened it up. That's what butterfly means. See, if we were actually stuffing the shrimp now, we could make a stuffing and stuff the shrimp. This stuff right here, that's just the, uh, you want to discard that outside stuff. And then if you were butterflying them, then what happens? Again, we would dredge them both sides in the flour, in that egg wash, making sure that it split open. And then in the breadcrumbs, and see you would have butterflied shrimp. Then, all right, about 300 and 360 degrees vegetable oil. I'm going to stop frying these shrimp. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to do this with the chipotle hollandaise sauce and then an ice cream that will blow your mind. Stick around. <laughs> Folks, welcome back. If you're just joining us, we're kind of focusing on a little bit of eggs. We had an egg wash. We did a hollandaise sauce. Huevos rancheros. Let me tell you. Woo. Yeah. Now, the shrimp, second batch, frying, golden brown. Of course, you know anything fried when it comes out of the oil, that's when you want to season it. Okay? That's when you want to season it. Now, we'll take our hollandaise that we made, and we're going to now fold in that cold blood orange and chipotle 
reduction, which will make this now like a Maltese, as I said to you, okay? This is when you want to taste it. And you can decide whether it needs salt. You want to add a little lemon juice. You want to add hot sauce to it. Maybe what you want to do is just take a little bit more of that chopped chipotle. Ah, why not, right? <laughs> we'll only live once. All right, now, we'll get that mixed in there. Let me show you what I like to do. Really, really simple. We're going to take our shrimp now out of the oil. Sort of let them drain. <laughs> this is a perfect portion for me. <laughs> it's really great. Now, you can just season it with a little salt if you want. <laughs> or what you can do is if you want a little essence in there to kick it up. What I like to do is this. I just take these wonderful green mixtures that you can find. And season it up, a little salt and pepper. And then what I do is I just take a little bit of that dressing or that hollandaise. See, I'm sort of treating it like a dressing like that, you see, on sort of those greens. And then what I do is I just add a little pool in the corners. And then you can just take a little shrimp like that. And then since this is my portion, and a little garnish, and it's that simple, folks. They, uh, they have a very simple fried shrimp dish. One of the other great things with eggs, at least for me, is ice cream. And the amount of also the, also the amount of importance of eggs with cakes. So I'm going to make a sponge cake, but first I'm going to make a little ice cream for you. And I've got cream, and I've got a little bit of milk, and you have to bring that up, folks, to about 160, 170. But you've got to be very careful that this doesn't boil over on your stove, because it will go up in flames, I promise you. That's why I'm like this with the fire guys, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, now what we're going to do to flavor it is we're going to take a vanilla bean. You could use real vanilla liquid if you want, but let me tell you, these ain't cheap, but one of these go a long way. Here's what I do. I take the vanilla bean and split it. What a lot of people don't realize, they just buy a vanilla bean and then they put the bean in there and they wonder, like, what happened? <laughs> That's because inside of the pod, watch when I'm going to scrape this, okay? That's where all, can you see that? That's where all the flavor is, you see? Watch how, how flavorful this is going to be. So you scrape the bean. Oh. It's the little things that just... Now and one goes a long way. You see that? Watch what happens when we just, watch all the little specks that we're gonna have now because we're using this vanilla bean. Now here's the other part. We're gonna take egg yolks and sugar because this is not sweet. Gonna mix this up. Once this gets, come on, this isn't rocket science here. <laughs> Milk cream, he split a vanilla bean, eggs and sugar. <laughs> now, what you want to do is a culinary term. Once it gets to the right temperature, what you want to do, folks, is you're going to add some of this scalded cream and milk mixture to the eggs. The reason for that is, is because 
You don't want to scramble the eggs inside of your hot cream. So this is called tempering. See, we're sort of bringing up the temperature of those eggs and sugar, and then we add that slowly right back into the pan. So it's tempered, no little beads. We didn't cook the eggs perfect. You with me so far? Now, we're going to take a couple of ounces of white chocolate. Oh, he's on fire right now. He's got six ingredients. What a culinary genius. Okay, now, once that melts, folks, you strain it just in case you did have any eggs in there that kind of got a little, you know, and the vanilla bean. Then let the vanilla bean pod dry out and you can use it again. Put it in your sugar, you'll have vanilla sugar. Once it cools, it's got to cool for a couple of hours, okay, folks? It's just got to, this is the ice cream base. Whatever your manufacturer's suggestions are on whatever ice cream machine, whether you got the crank kind, small kind, I just got like this kind right here. I add it in here, it's been chilling. See all the specks of the vanilla? Now, I'm going to add this back on here, and then I'm going to do my little churner thing. <laughs> okay? When we come back, ho, ho, another night. Stick around. Lock in. in the MLI band. So uh, now I'm going to show you while uh, the ice cream's in ice cream land. One of my favorite cakes is this very light sponge. The whole trick to the sponge is getting the volume, which is another component that eggs, do, you know, that it does, both in yolks and in whites, like a souffle is to get the volume for this sponge. I got a little milk and a uh, little pat of butter in there just kind of melting down, getting warm. I'm gonna turn that off. Dry ingredients I'm gonna show you. We gotta get air into these eggs. So we started out with eight eggs. And what you're gonna see, you see the color of them right now? Can you see that? Okay, we're just gonna I'm going to show you how we're going to whip air. We're getting air inside of the eggs, and it's expanding it. So not only is the volume going to expand, but the color is going to start getting pale. And then we're going to take our dry ingredients, which is basically just some flour, a little salt, some baking powder, and I'm going to strain or sift now, a lot of people think that why you sift flour and dry ingredients is to see if they're like any little, you know, strangers that might be, you know, maybe that's true, I don't know, but the reason why I strain it or sift it is because I, see, I want to aerate the flour. That's exactly what I just did, I aerated it. Now, I got a little sheet pan that I buttered. Then I have this parchment paper on the bottom. It's like kind of making a jelly roll, you know what I mean? See how the eggs are changing right now? While that's still doing its thing, let's talk about another great thing that I love. These are pralines. And uh, you can get the recipe on that www.foodtv.emerald dot com or whatever. But I'm going to bust these up, these pralines, or you can buy them. Because this is what I'm now going to fold into my ice cream to kick it up another notch. 
Yeah, I figured, hey, why not? You know, why not just add a little crushed pralines in that white chocolate decadent ice cream already, right? So what I do, when the ice cream gets in the machine somewhat starting to get hard like this, I just go in for the kill. <laughs> why mess around, right? At this point, sometimes I say to myself, Self, do I even want to go back in the freezer with this thing? <laughs> you put a little plastic wrap on it, folks, okay? Let it get hard for a couple of hours. And then I'm going to show you how we're going to finish this dessert. Now, look at how much volume we got on the eggs. You see that? See how pale they've gotten? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start slowly adding just a little bit of that milk mixture. See, I like these, these ladies here. I would have just added it in there when it was on 10. <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, you know, nice ladies. Slowly, then we'll, then we'll kick it up a little bit. So you get it, little flour, little milk and butter, little flour, little milk and butter on the pan, 350 degrees, 40 minutes. When we come back, I'll show you how to put it together. Doc Gibbs, everybody! in the MLI band. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> Kicking it up with, a, with eggs tonight. All right, so the, uh, the sponge goes uh, inside of the pan, 350 degrees. This is what it looks like, okay? This nice color, it springs back at you. The ice cream, the first batch that we finally made, is uh, just about done. You see when this is kind of at that consistency is when you want to you want to take it out, fold it in, and then put it in the hard freeze. Now, speaking about that, once the sponge cake cools for about 10 minutes, what you can do is kind of use this pan lined with plastic so you can get it out easy. Then here's what I do. I take a little piece of the sponge, put that in the bottom. Then I use a little liqueur. Not too much, you know. <laughs> you just kind of brush it. I, I'm using a little frangelica. You could use whatever. Then what I do is take a layer of that praline white chocolate ice cream. Okay? You with me so far? Yeah. And then I just kind of, I, you know, I kind of spread it like that or... You can just kind of bang it. Then what we do is we take another layer, press it down. Why not, right? <laughs> just a little notch. Then what I do is I take another layer, okay? So basically what you can do is stack these to the moon if you want, if you got a pan deep enough, but at least three layers. Now, when you do that, you put it inside of the ice box. You can even do this a day or two before your family or guests, you take it out of the pan, okay? And then what we'll do is you unwrap it like such, and then I'm gonna show you how I like to personally serve it. With me, I like to take sort of a little slice like such, and what I do is this. I take a little caramel. All right, I take a little bit more caramel. How's that? A little caramel on the bottom. Then you take your slice like such. Then I take a little bit of whipped cream, okay, just like that. And then I take these frozen candy bars, and, I, and what I do is I smash them in a bag, get my frustration out at the same time. 
okay? See, and I take a, like those toffee bars. I do a little bit like that. Stick one in there for me and you later on. Have a little mint, just like this. Take a little bit more caramel, just for fun, okay? And then, bam, bam, bam! Oh! Bam! Unbelievable! Talk about egg delicious. I'm Emma Lagasse. I want to thank you for joining me tonight. See you tomorrow, everybody!